um, you're here today to really raise awareness around the lack of funding, particularly in Victoria, but mm -hmm. um, for legal aid as a whole um, within this country. So tell us a little bit about why you think um, and what changes can, can happen in order to overcome some of these issues. Well, philosophically, the parliaments are there and our elected representatives are there to make laws in the interest of the community. So we've had the world's largest research tell us that 25% of the population will have a legal problem in any one year and half of those will disclose that as a serious problem. We've also had, um, we know that 14% of people in Australia live below the poverty line, but only 8% of people qualify for legal aid. That's not me talking, that's the Productivity Commission talking. Mm. And they've said that a dollar invested in legal aid more than pays for itself in money saved in social security in in health and other related costs. So it's an economic no-brainer to invest in legal aid and it's a moral imperative, I think, to really create that society that the Australian Fair Go folklore is made up of, but which we're not actually seeing in our everyday practice. Bevan, funding, we're talking funding here. Now that's from the Commonwealth Government, correct? We get money from the Commonwealth and the State Government. Now. My understanding is you need at least $200 million to not only keep things going, but really boost the support. Is so that the, correct? So the Productivity Commission recommended that there be an additional $200 million nationally in the legal aid system and that would pay for itself. And we've said Victoria's fair share of that would be $72 million, which is the Productivity Commission's mm. recommendation plus an amount so that Victoria could reach parity with New South Wales. We're talking about disparity uh, with uh, financing from the Commonwealth and state governments between Victoria and New South Wales, for example. Can you elaborate on that, please? Well, the Commonwealth has a formula of sharing money around the states and Victoria is disadvantaged by that formula. Um, we're the lowest funded state uh, on a per capita basis of all the states and we would say that's unfair. In relation to state funding, our closest comparative state, New South Wales, receives more generous funding from the state government than Victoria. And in combined terms, that means that we're about $20 million short. So mm. Aren't that's you a lot seeking of... $74 million, though, for, from a, for state legal aid funding? Yeah, we want, we want the, the government to implement the Productivity Commission recommendations and we want parity with New South Wales, and that would inject... $72 million into the Victorian legal assistance sector. So we really want the state Labor government, Dan, Daniel Andrews, <laughs> kick in, mate. <laughs> Uh, Victoria Legal Aid needs your help. Yeah, and it's really interesting because um, you don't really deal with the area of personal injury because mm. we have you know, a really, really strong no-win, no-charge um, premise on which that we can help the community. And yes. it's really unfortunate that you know, other areas of law that we've discussed uh, across all sectors don't really have that same access and that's why legal aid is so incredibly mm. important to the community um, to provide access and, and given the fact that the means testing is, is so difficult to infiltrate and so difficult to overcome, mm. I mean, we really do implore the community to get behind legal aid. And <laughs>